good to, to see you. you. Well, welcome to New York. Thank you. And welcome to Essex Market. It's great here. Uh, yes. Um, let's go take a stroll. I'm excited for you to teach me a little bit about how to look out for vegan labeling and what Bed Veg is up to regarding certifying that products are truly vegan to the core. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> So I was born and raised vegan by my mom. She had a vegan pregnancy with me. Wow. And actually our family is fourth generation on my mom's side vegetarian. It started when my great grandfather had cancer and he did it for health issues and he literally cured wow. himself. My dad, not vegan at all, they divorced when I was about five years old. So. Um, I'd go to my dad's, he tried to feed me meat, and I protested and waged World War III on my plate at five, six, seven years old. Finally, he gave up. He stopped trying to make me eat meat. It was a time where, you know, marketing was so much of that food pyramid, even in our school systems, where you needed to have, you know, X amount of dairy for calcium, and you needed to have this much meat, meat for protein. protein. So, um, it really was a rough time for me growing up this way because it's not like it is now. Like I was truly bullied and an outcast. And what's nice now is things have changed. So it's actually cool to be vegan and to choose a plant-based diet. ballerina right so um, yep I trained professionally I danced like eight hours a day I was accepted into New York City Ballet American Ballet Theater Juilliard and I danced professionally all throughout school so there's no uh, compromise or sacrifice on my physical athleticism because I chose to not eat meat or have dairy growing up it worked <laughs> you know so then I'm curious so. If you were accepted to Juilliard and New York Ballet, what made you go on the path to becoming a lawyer? I saw my mom struggle. My mom was a professional ballet dancer, oh, okay. and she did Broadway. And when my parents divorced, I saw her struggle as like a single mom. And I did not want to fully struggle. So I decided to go pursue the education path, but I danced professionally all throughout <laughs> school. So I went to Berkeley Law School, and while at Berkeley, I danced at the Oakland Ballet. And then I got a master's in journalism at Northwestern, and while there I took uh, professional classes at the Joffrey Ballet. So I never gave it up, and I let it follow me, but I, or I followed it, but I didn't do it to my full potential, um, which sometimes I regret. But I think that there are no accidents in life, and you know, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I would love to introduce you to Riverdale Cheese. They are fully vegan cheese. And what I think is so amazing that complements your story about how plant-based and veganism is making a huge impact and movement is we're standing in front of what looks like a French-style cheese case in the middle right. of Essex Market across from the meat and dairy cheese on the other side of the aisle. But this is all animal-free, cruelty-free deliciousness. of looking into the ingredients are coming from, where they're coming from. Let's break it down. 
So when they apply to us, basically we get all the information on their manufacturing process, even though that's trade secret protected, we get that information. We get a list of all the ingredients per product, um, including the source ingredients and the supplier of those ingredients. And we trace the ingredients back to their source to make sure all the ingredients are actually vegan. We've had it happen many times, actually, where products think that they're vegan and then they, they apply to us and they have um, a yeast ingredient or a sugar ingredient and then they disclose the supplier of that yeast or that sugar and we learn that that batch of sugar was made with natural charcoal, which is, dis which is a disguised term for bone char. Or we learn that that yeast ingredient has biotin, which is a dairy derivative. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they were claiming vegan, but yet the source ingredient, which the law would say is an insignificant ingredient, is actually not vegan. Another way the law is completely deficient is that it allows you to round down to zero any ingredients that are less than 0.5 grams per serving. Let's just use this for an example. Okay, this is a perfect example. First, they claim vegan and they're not certified vegan. And second, this has five servings per container. The thing is, is not everything's disclosed. So like sugar, for example, if it's less than 0.5 grams per serving, they can round down to zero for the entire bag and say zero sugar. Or if um, it's- But then if I did eat all five servings, you're I would actually sugar. be eating like 2.5 or three grams of sugar yeah, that's undisclosed. Right, so it's really misleading. The law is misleading and deficient right now. And so that's where we come in as a law firm and as attorneys to pioneer a path forward to set the standard and raise the standard of the law and lawyers by nature are regulators and we really hope to make a difference and we really want to you know lend transparency and credibility to the process and for me it's a you know it's a passion of mine I was born and raised vegan and you know I, I care I care what's in my my food and I you know care about changing the environment and animals and contributing to a more conscious uh, world. <laughs> are there any products that you would assume are just strictly vegan, like nuts or maybe coffee or tea, just because it comes off of a plant? For wine, beers and liqueurs, a lot of people think, let's take wine for example, how can wine be anything except grapes? Well, mm -hmm. I love this example because with alcohol, there's no ingredients listed on a label. so. I actually have no idea what is in any alcoholic beverage. There's a wine place right here, so we should go check it out yeah. and uh, dig into it. this. perfect example of how the law is completely deficient. So the Tobacco and Trade Bureau, which regulates the labeling laws of alcohol, pretty much only requires the government warning and the alcohol content in order to prove a label through the COLA website. Um, but in reality, there is a, about more than 66 ingredients that could go into making an alcoholic beverage. Whoa which people mm -hmm. have no idea about. A lot of wines and, and beers too are filtered and clarified through different ingredients, which is part of the manufacturing process. So they might use isinglass, which is fish bladder. They might use gelatin, which is cow's elbows and knees and horse hooves. They might use the intestines of an animal. They might use crustacean shells, which is the bones of a fish. They might use different mucuses and membranes to deacidify the wine. There's so many things that can go through the winemaking process. We're getting lied to. <laughs> We need truth, and that's where you come in. Um, if I'm a startup plant-based company, and I want to show assurance that I, I am true to my core, a plant-based vegan company, is it gonna break the bank? No, our goal is to not break the bank. Our goal is to get information out there, and we believe in what we're doing, so the money will come. <laughs> our goal is information, our goal is to have the most updated app, and our goal is to have 
a vegan symbol out there that the consumer can trust that's standardized. How do I know what sort of what vegan symbols to trust or what not. The law allows you to claim vegan and self-certify as vegan. And so any any product that just says vegan, I would say is suspect. It really doesn't cost much money to get certified vegan. These products are on shelves making zillions of dollars a year. They have massive distribution. There's no reason to not prove it up. It also, it helps the companies because sometimes they're not aware of their non-vegan practices, so they can make a shift and reapply another year, which has also happened. And if vegan is the new trend word that's now getting slapped onto packaging and there's no one holding it accountable, that's really scary. Right. And for people that really care about consciously, you know, grabbing a vegan product off the shelf. Right. So that's why it's important to do what you're doing and get the word out. <laughs> well, really appreciate the work yeah. that you're doing and the time you. that and the commitment you have yeah. to making the world a little healthier and better and more conscious. Conscious. Place. Conscious is it. Yeah.